what happens in Ontario when a victim files a criminal harassment report with the police? You know, normally I just talk about criminal law topics from the perspective of the accused, but I thought I'd do a victim-oriented one because many people are reaching out online, both to me and, and online, and asking this question. So I'm going to walk you through the steps if you're a victim of harassment. So let's say under Section 264.1 of the Code is the charging section, by the way. Let's say that you're a victim of harassment. Someone's watching you, following you around, threatening you, watching and besetting your, your dwelling house, whether it's a spouse, whether it's a friend, whether it's a stranger, those are all forms of criminal harassing. Stalking behavior is also criminal harassing. What should you do in those situations and what can you do? Well, first and foremost, it depends the emerg how threatening it is. If it's happening right imminently, you should phone 911. But perhaps on other situations where you know, you're in the light of day, it's not going on right now, you should perhaps phone an att or attend your police station and, and file a report. I would gather a, a detailed statement yourself. Write all, everything down, chronological order, in as much detail as possible. Gather all the text, gather all the photos, whatever electronic evidence, video evidence you have. Bring it to the police station. You're initially going to meet with a, a police officer who's going to take an initial occurrence report. They may refer it to a detective, depending on the severity of it, or they may deal with themselves. You'll probably uh, be, you know, have an a interview where they do it on videotape either that day or another day as well. And they're going to also interview any other witnesses. So write down the names of witnesses and provide that to them. So you want to provide the police with all of the evidence. Now, you might say to the police, look, you know, I, I don't really want the person charged. And that's up to the police ultimately. But if it's a, a non-domestic, in other words, it's not your spouse or it's not your, your significant other, they may just warn the person at your behest because you don't want charges. But that's up to them. If, if you file the report, they can proceed with it. It's not up to you ultimately. But many police in that situation will just issue a warning if you don't want to get involved in the criminal process. If it's a domestic, however, there's directives. They may lay the charge against your wishes. There's directives if it's a, a domestic related. That's important to know before you go down to the police station. So what happens then? Well, the police, after they complete their investigation, which may be completed that day, which may take a few days, if there's other, or a week or even two weeks, depending on the complexity of it, they're gonna decide if they have reasonable probable grounds to charge the person. If they do, they're either gonna arrest that person, likely arrest that person, they get summon them some, but I think in most instances, they're going to actually arrest them, bring them to jail, either release them on bail or bring them into uh, a bail hearing for a JP to release them. If they got no prior record, they probably get released. If they, if they have a prior record, it depends on the severity, whether they're held. But there's going to be a known contact order. That's the beauty of it. You, you're, hopefully your problems are solved for now, pending the trial or their guilty plea. So now it's then up to that person. <clears throat> they, once they hire a lawyer, they're going to review the police reports. Uh, maybe they're going to have a trial in which you would have to testify and, and the Crown would have to prove the case beyond a reasonable doubt. Hopefully they just plead guilty and then they'd be sentenced. And you get a say at that sentencing hearing, you, you get to file a victim impact statement. I can tell you this, there's a full spectrum of sentences for criminal harassment. Some criminal harassment is very, very, very serious. It's all serious, but it's, you know, from innocuous multiple phone calls, which are causing some degree of fear, right up to stalking, which is causing psychological fear and danger for the person. I mean, at the one end, the person probably wouldn't face a jail term, might even get a conditional discharge. Well, that's, that's more rare for stalking behavior, by the way, up to pretty significant jail terms. So it's a process. I mean, you know, the investigation stage might take some days. It might take a few weeks, depending on the complexity. Uh, it might take several months if they decide to plead guilty. You've got a non-contact order. After they're sentenced, there's another non-contact order. It could be up to three years if they get three years of probation. So that's a great protective mechanism for you. Or you have a trial in which the Crown's can either hopefully prove the case beyond a reasonable doubt, person's gonna be sentenced. And again, uh, hopefully there's a, a non-con, or there would be a non-contact order. They wouldn't be allowed to show up at your workplace, home, or other residence. And if they did, you phone the police, they'd be arrested and charged with another criminal offense. And they'd be facing really lengthy jail at that point. So there, I just want to put out a video for victims to help them about the process. There's materials online. The police are very good about this. They're very compassionate. They have, they have specialized people who deal with this, so they know how to deal with these situations. And you can guide the police accordingly. I mean, you just want the person warned, and it's a non-domestic, you hopefully can do that. 
Uh, but it's really out of your hands once you make the report. But know this, and I'm I st reiterating it, if you're a domestic situation of the person, the police are probably going to lay that charge if, if there's reasonable problem grounds. And once those wheels of justice are set in motion, there's not much you can do about it. And the Crowns have directives as well to prosecute those type of offenses. So there you have it in a nutshell from investigation right through to the end of the trial for the process for uh, reporting a criminal harassment charge. Thank you for watching our video. We are absolutely committed to bringing you the best possible criminal and DUI educational videos. If you found this video helpful, please like it and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you've been charged with a criminal offense in Ontario and require our services, please click on the link in the description below.